There was once a time, many, many millions of Volkswagens ago, when there were no cars on our roads with streamlining and low fuel consumption. None based on trend-setting technology with indestructible engines. There were no cars with proverbial reliability and unmistakable styling. None which everyone could afford and none which promised mobility to all. Motoring was an expensive pleasure and an exhausting adventure into the bargain. In America and France, cars were already rolling off the production lines. But in Germany, too many small firms were involved in low-volume car production using uneconomical methods. To us, the car was a status symbol and mass mobility was a foreign term. But there was one man who was ahead of his time, Ferdinand Porsche, a brilliant inventor and designer. As early as 1932, the beetle-shaped nose of his NSU prototype clashed with the prevailing sense of style and technical understanding. Two years later, Porsche submitted his design for a people's car to the government of the Reich, a cheap, economical car using advanced but problem-free techniques. And in 1936, the Beetle learned to run. Porsche used the prototypes to try out the best techniques for producing a good basic car which would cost less than a thousand Reichsmarks. The development work on the car for all attracted growing interest from the then brown-shirted authorities. Grand trial run, 1936. Distance, 50,000 kilometers. The arrival of the prototypes was awaited on Porsche's private estate in Stuttgart. They passed the tough tests in preparation for mass production, for which the Nazis were impatiently pressing because Dr. Porsche's Volkswagen fitted in with their ideology. The German labor front also adopted the Volkswagen project, not least in order to create jobs. In 1938, the foundation stone for the Volkswagen factory was laid near Fallersleben. The newsreel commentator described the car and factory in a style typical of the time. Dr. Porsche has designed a saloon, an open-top car and a convertible, which with a fuel consumption of six to seven litres and a cruising speed of 100 kilometres per hour will cost only 990 marks. But the finished Volkswagen was only running up propaganda under another name. Even foreign journalists were won over by the KDF car. They were amazed by its low petrol consumption of only six and a half litres, its rapid acceleration from naught to 60 kilometres per hour in 14 seconds, and by its outstanding road holding and four-speed gearbox. In order to keep the price of the car artificially low for political reasons, the KDF, or Strength Through Joy organization, took over the job of distributing it. Fully believing in the promise of mobility for all, 336,000 savers stuck stamp upon stamp onto savings cards, which often didn't bear the prospective year of delivery. Yet none of the savers got his car. In 1968, Kurt Lotz succeeds the late Heinrich Nordhoff. The K70 comes onto the market in 1970. But despite its up-to-date design, the first water-cooled Volkswagen is not a lasting success. Nor is the 411. The search for a successor to the Beetle continues. A change in Wolfsburg at a difficult time. The Golf, which appears in the crisis year of 1974, is the turning point. It's a success from the beginning. Group losses are more than offset. The new generation of models, Passat, Scirocco, Golf and Polo, sets the trend for motor car design of the future. In 1976, after a great deal of thought had been given to securing the important American market, the Westmoreland factory was built. In the same year, the Gulf reached the million mark at home. 